actually, I just remembered the story. Yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> from, from, from this conversation. <laughs> Is that when, when I was much younger um, than when I actually started fasting, uh, I I was always uh, like pestering my my elders to let me fast let me fast and one day we were visiting our grandmother's house my mother's mom's house and um, when I got up in the morning and I went to the kitchen to ask for breakfast my aunt said but you're fasting and I said really (laughs) (laughs) but I I don't but I don't remember getting up to eat in the morning Uh. Uh, and she said, no, you got up, I fed you, and uh, uh, you said you were going to fast, so you want breakfast? And I was, I was thinking, like, oh. hmm, I don't I don't remember this, but if she's saying it, I must have gotten up. And so I was, I was just sitting with her in the kitchen, she was doing her work, and I kept saying, yeah, but I'm hungry. Did I really eat in the morning? <laughs> and she said, yes, yes. <laughs> Did you ever ask her that was that a true story or did she make it make it up for you? No, I I, I didn't up. think of, think of asking that. Uh, but then you know this kept this kept on for until half a day, and uh, th- then she said, "Okay, now you can eat. You're you're good." Uh, <laughs> and she told me that she just she said you you were so adamant because they tried waking me up in the morning. I didn't get up. Oh, this was yeah. the, this was the, background the lesson. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, you try it. Yeah. But you know, it 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 was good. So I wanted to ask you, what has it done for you so far? Fasting. Fasting is how is it beneficial to you? Is it any? Is is it detrimental to you in any form or shape? No, I don't think so at all. Hmm. Uh, it has uh, done nothing but be beneficial for me because it has helped me develop a stronger uh, relationship with my creator it has helped me develop a better relationship with myself uh, Hmm. in terms of uh, in terms of understanding you know my my weaknesses my strengths um, um, how how I am uh, with people if I am not feeling my optimal uh, self uh, how do I control myself? How do I control negative impulses uh, within? How how to listen and how to obey the commands of Allah, regardless of the fact whether I am with people or alone. So it has taught me a, a lot of things. And that's what taqwa is. That's what God consciousness is, to be uh, a, a person of good whether we are with people or by ourselves so you control what you're doing even then because there's no time when God is not watching you mm. right. I don't know if you heard that story um, as we were growing up we heard that story that this teacher uh, gave uh, these two students uh, candy and said uh, okay eat it where no one can see you and one of them came back the next day, he had eaten it, and the other one came back and gave the candy back. And so the teacher asked them, well, the first one, why did where where did you eat it? And he said, well, you know, I hid uh, in my closet with the lights off and everything, and no one could see me or hear me, and I ate it there. But the, the, and the teacher asked the other one, why did you not eat it? And he said, because I could not find a place where God was not watching. So... You know, to have that really helps us see ourselves in the light of how is God seeing me right now? Am I doing what he wants me to do or am I doing what I want to do, uh, regardless if it is allowed or not? No, I haven't heard about this example. Maybe some other version, but yeah, I don't remember or recall. Do you work during Ramadan as well? I mean, yeah. not everybody has the luxury not to be off. Uh, yeah. No, well. th- we work during Ramadan, but thankfully the last ten days they gave us off because it's a Islamic it's school. Islamic school, yeah. Uh, so that 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 helps uh, a lot because mm. in, in the last ten days, uh, it's cus- it's part of Ramadan to stay up and uh, 
look for that one night of power that Allah has hidden in the last 10 days where you uh, ask for forgiveness and uh, whatever else you want to ask for. Uh -huh. So it's a special, it's a special night. So to look for it, you people tend to stay awake most of the night. So it does get tiring at the end, but uh, uh, I think it's more of a physical tiredness rather than a spiritual tiredness. You want to keep on going and do even more of not not just the uh, obligatory uh, actions but also optional and you know what what how you would want to please uh, god yeah yeah and also i want to make sure that everybody understands that this is your personal uh, experience that you're talking about it's not that you can mm -hmm. generalize if you're tired yeah, or energetic yeah. obviously we are talking to lubna malik who is a islamic school uh, teacher and a mother, and uh, she um, is talking from her perspective. But everybody's experience is different about the energy or how they feel. It's hard or not hard, and all mm. that. So that's why I ask everyone. But yeah, it's interesting to find out. I think in in general, what I see is uh, like talking to my students you know, or experiencing it with my family and my own kids is that physical energy may get a little weak because you know it takes a, it is yeah you know, and also it depends on the not, time of the it's day it's not an it's easy not, thing it's not the whole day yeah, that you're not energetic it's, not the it's just the yeah, yeah. The, the duration in the evening when you're ready to open the fast or the break the fast or all that and depending on how much sleep and all so there's so many variables to that mm, i would yes. like to add that into it because yeah. I, I personally have a different experience but yes it depends on the time of the day time when the day. You feel a little yes. you know tired or energetic yeah. Yeah. sorry so physical uh, physical mm -hmm. energy may be a little low but spiritual energy increases the more you get into it. so it's 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 a uh, it's a different experience you have uh -huh. in uh, Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Well, would you uh, tell our audience uh, about uh, the age group that you are uh, teaching? I teach uh, middle school, sixth and seventh grade this year. But I used to teach teach seventh and eighth grade. Uh, so this year is my first time ever teaching such younger kids like sixth grade. Mm. So that's it's interesting. A, it's, and it's a good experience. Mm. I, I didn't think I would uh, I would be able to be very effective with mm. the, a much younger audience. But uh, why would you say that? Because I like to the the way I teach is uh, I like to elevate their level of thinking. So I was in my mind, I was I was like, okay, how can I make them understand? about these kinds of concepts and uh, you know something more abstract mm. not just looking at the at the superficial version of uh, our articles of faith and our pillars of uh, uh, of faith but going deeper into the deeper dimensions of how it is you know all of them are geared towards our heart having a certain journey to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not just you know doing them as rituals so but oh. I, I had a really good uh, uh, response from them so I was oh. actually I'm now actually happy that I did uh, get them at that age so it must be your students are good and the teacher must be good for those students oh. uh, yeah obviously well, uh, I mean we have yeah, to yeah, ask the students love, but... <laughs> yeah you yeah. have to ask the students. Yeah. And for myself, it's, you know, I, I, I feel that it's not me, but it is the uh, enabling of God to to give me what he wants to give me so that I can deliver his. Mm. So you find the right them way. mature mature enough to... Yeah, I think we have uh. underestimate the kids. They are capable of uh, much higher levels of thinking if we give them the opportunity. And to develop a sense of self who we are and how are these things affecting uh, me at a personal level or and how does it help me grow at a personal level not just as a, a person but as a believer as well good thank you so uh, i ask these questions to everyone uh, since uh, five years i've been asking these um, and the research i hope i can publish it soon that what is wealth in your experience 
I think wealth in my experience is knowing that you have enough. Uh, you know, we need material wealth to live a certain way or, or you know, quote unquote, live comfortably in this world. But if I have a million dollars, but I don't think it's enough, I will feel I'm poor. So, you know, for me, wealth is knowing that I have enough and uh, anything else would be extra. Thank you. What is the value of gratitude in your life? Gratitude is important because that is what generates that feeling of wealth, right? If I'm grateful for what I have, that means I am content with it. And as the prophet said, uh, peace be upon him, that uh, wealth is not what you have of material gains, but wealth is to have a heart that is content. And contentment only comes with uh, gratitude and, and not complaining all the time about the lacks that may exist for us. Thank you. What is the value of time? Time is priceless. You cannot put a value on time. Time is what we make of it. The more we feel time, the slower it goes for us. The more we are unmindful of it, uh, we look, turn around and we'll say, where did the time go? Right. So use the time now. Now is the most precious moment in time. If we don't have now, if we are not here now, we have nothing. This is the only point of change. This is the only point of growth. What this past is gone, we don't know if we're going to be in the future. So use your now, use your time now. Well, thank you for that. So people listen this, uh, listen to this episode now. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um, conscious about the environment that uh, from the climate point of view? Yes, I think I am because you see the manifestation of human intrusion mm -hmm. in the workings of God's mechanisms and how it can corrupt. So unless we are mindful of what we are doing, our environment will be more and more polluted and corrupt. So, yeah. I, am. Um, I just want to add another information here about uh, environment and climate that I will be interviewing someone uh, soon uh, who is an environmentalist and he's from Turkey oh. and a Muslim and uh, that's what he does. So I will be bringing him on the show to talk about fasting and then give his perspective about the environment and how uh, how Islam teaches us or the Quran teaches us uh, to be so, uh, to be mindful of our environment and how to take care of Mother Earth. Yeah, also, you know, I think it's, uh, we talk about what is my right, you know, what are rights due to me, but we forget that everything else, including our environment, has a right upon us. What are we doing? And I think that's more important to uh, make ourselves consciously aware of that what are my responsibilities, what are my duties. If everybody thinks that way, then everybody's right and everything's right would be fulfilled, right? It's not it's the, the sense of entitlement that if, you know, that I need to get this, it's okay, what can I give? That brings you more um, pleasure, it brings you more contentment and uh, just makes the world a better place. So to think of the rights I have to give rather than the rights that I have to get is a, is a huge mind shift, but uh, it's the one that I feel is uh, necessary. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> what is the purpose of your life? The purpose of my life is uh, to realize the existence of God, to learn about him, to know him so that I can become the best version of myself uh, in this world and, <clears throat> and represent him in the best way possible uh, on this earth. And the only way to know how to be good is to know God uh, through all his attributes. So the more we know him, the better we become, uh, hopefully. So the purpose is to know him. Thank you. Any message of hope you would like to give? Never lose hope. <laughs> yeah. right? There's the, because uh, 
from my perspective, from an Islamic perspective, we cannot lose hope because if we lose hope, we give up on God. And God is infinite. He can do whatever he wants. We strive to do what we can. We struggle with ourselves, with our environment, with our children, with our families, our friends, colleagues, everybody. But uh, we always turn to him for guidance and help to show us how to do it the right way, in a way that pleases him, not in a way that angers him or leads us to go away from the truth. So, you know, this is the first chapter of the Quran, the the Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening of the Quran. It teaches us how to be, how to relate ourselves to, to God, um, how to seek uh, help from him and guidance from him and to walk the way that he walks. Uh, that he wants us to walk so that we are never hopeless. We always can turn to him uh, in any moment, and he is there. That's the, that's the in the middle of the ayahs of Ramadan. We started with Ramadan, and I guess we can end with that, that in the middle of it, he says, anyone who asks, he doesn't, he does not talk about believers or non-believers. He says, anyone who asks, and he's saying to the prophet, tell them, anyone who asks me, I am there. So, yeah, you know, we cannot, if we lose hope, what is there? Nothing. We cannot lose hope because he is always there. Thank you. So my last question is? Yeah, you said that was the last question. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the last question. How can you say that? It's my podcast <laughs> title. Oh my God. Oh, that's okay. heartbreaking, but God, please help me through this. Okay. <laughs> oh, should I even ask her, audience, should I even ask her the question? I mean, everybody knows my last question. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, right, look at I you. Remember. Now I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I don't know if I'll delete this, mm. edit this, or I'll keep it. Let's see. Okay. Delete it. My last question <laughs> is now, now I'm, now she said it, so I won't. Um, last question is <laughs> <laughs> what lights you up, Lubna? <laughs> you uh... forgot about this question? <laughs> oh my God. I'm insulted. Yeah, I was, I was, I was only, I was only, no. <laughs> no, I was kidding. only focusing on, uh, on, on Ramadan. <laughs> I know, I know. No, but I, these are these <clears throat> the last segment is. Yes, oh, it's in the that? light yeah. of uh, Ramadan, but you know, uh, I have to ask these. Uh, I continue with my research. Now let's see what she okay. says. What she said four years ago. We'll compare it with her, that. I don't think she remembers. Oh, if I don't remember at all what I said. Yeah, good. But what 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 lights me up is uh, stimulating conversations like this, that you know you you get to talk about what or somebody is interested in what uh, lights you up. That somebody wants to know how, you know, what brings you joy, what brings you happiness. So that feeling of uh, worth. But what lights me up really is that. God gave gives these opportunities for us uh, to say and do what he wants us to say and do in that moment. Uh, again, using the moment well, and I can look back and say uh, in my life, yes, there were many moments that I have wasted, but thankfully God has given me many precious moments also where I hope he accepts the contributions that he has enabled me to make towards uh, my legacy in front of him. I don't Thank know you. if that makes sense. I don't it made know. sense in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, audience. Does it make sense to you? Hello, one, two, three. Because this is an audio yeah. podcast. It's not going to be in a video. So I <laughs> guess we have given enough of the expressions that you might be enjoying it also. And learning from our conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a rich conversation. And uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I think. So let's see what Lubna thinks about our conversation, <laughs> about your experience throughout today. Uh, what would you like to say 
about uh, anything else if you want to, but right. please, uh, I want your your comment of your experience with the to, I mean, in the in this conversation. To end this conversation. Yes. Okay. The third ending for this day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I think this was a, a very good conversation. It was a first of all, you know, we are friends, so. I always enjoy these conversations with you. Um, but these are important topics to talk about. These are important because when we talk about it, we come to many realizations for our own selves, right? Uh, we see a different perspective. We we uh, we might hear something we had never thought about or, or a perspective we had never reflected upon. So it's, uh, you know, I enjoyed it a lot. It was... Uh, and I hope uh, people listening will uh, benefit from our two cents, uh, if they made sense. But... Four cents, actually, but that's okay. Hmm. A little too, the, the inflation has gone up, so we want to freeze <laughs> yeah, exactly. the rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, every, everything is expensive now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah no. Coming it. back thank to you. thank you so much that I really appreciate that. So uh, I want you uh, to give the message to our audience that, okay. Uh, yeah, I would encourage everybody to listen uh, to these podcasts because uh, uh, I believe it will help uh, us uh, learn and grow in in ways that we may not have uh, thought about, and encourage others to. Uh, listen as well. Maybe you know they can contact Shua and 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 say I want to be on this podcast, and, oh. and that would be cool oh. to have regular people coming on. Uh, you know, you know to hear from uh, everyday Muslims or everyday uh, non-Muslims uh, would be cool into what is their perspective of life and their their sense of purpose and. So, uh, yeah, subscribe, like, all of the above. Share. Share. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Lubna, for your time today. I really appreciate it.